Good morning. My name is Phil Satry, and I'm one of the co-facilitators or moderators for today's events. And on behalf of my other facilitator, uh, Rob Lang, we'd like to welcome you to Nevada 2.0. And thank you for the huge turnout and response that we've had to this event on relatively short notice. And there's some other people that we'll be thanking for uh, their work in making this event possible. But we, we have a very full agenda this morning, and in front of you, you'll see that. Many of you have already seen the outline of that. And we want to get started as quickly as possible uh, because it's going to be an exciting, fact-filled day, an opportunity for us to really coalesce around Nevada 2.0 and creating new economies for a sustainable future. We're going to begin our morning with uh, short presentations by our three hosts, Lieutenant Governor Brian Krolicki, Senate Majority Leader Stephen Horsford, and Assembly Speaker John Oseguera. I'm going to ask all three of them if they would please come up to uh, the podium right now so that they can uh, proceed in the order that I just outlined. So please welcome three people who really made this possible. Lieutenant Governor Brian Krolicki, Senate Majority Leader Stephen Horsford, and Assembly Speaker John Oseguera. And I'm ready for Brian to come right up here. Uh, we all know Brian, and I'm going to just ask you to proceed with your remarks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Phil Satchery. Uh, you, 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 I appreciate your help today, and uh, Southwest Airlines would be proud. You are running an on-schedule airline today. You know, if anyone had any doubt about how important this state and the folks who really are the, the backbone of our communities and our higher education system, our private sector, our legislative leadership, there's no doubt that uh, economic development, economic diversification, is first and foremost on our minds because of this incredible showing today. Thank you so much for being here. Give yourselves a hand, please. You know, um, economic development, I think most of you know, is something that is part of the Lieutenant Governor's portfolio. I have the pleasure, among many things, of chairing the Commission on Economic Development. And, um, you know, in, in normal days and years past, it's an, always an important job, but it may not have the profile that, that it certainly does today. And uh, I feel like we're, we're all in the hot seat now because everyone's looking at what we do. And uh, you know what? We realize that things are different. Nevada's economy has reached a point where we truly need to retool our infrastructure. We need to retool the way we think. We might need some statutory assistance in, in, in doing these things. Private sector makes jobs, but uh, the things that we can do, the things that we can cheerlead, the things that we can focus on, that's where we are, are putting all of our energies. We've got a tremendous team in place. And um, one of the silver linings I absolutely believe of the difficult times that Nevada has faced during these past few years is you know, there are many folks, many entities, many incredibly well-intentioned people who want to dedicate themselves to economic development, to lift Nevada out of the, the funk we have felt, certainly for these last two years. But uh, one of the silver linings of this difficult time is that people are working together in ways that are actually incredibly special. Uh, the, the concerted efforts, the, the concept of pulling on the rope in the same direction at the same time has never been truer in our state. And again, I, I think seeing the faces here today is a testament to that spirit of cooperation. This isn't a partisan issue, it's a Nevada issue. Uh, my good friends John Oseguera and Stephen Horsford, you know, we are committed to working together to make this happen. If I can give you a little update on things that we have been doing over the past year, we're culminating literally this month in preparation of the legislative session, and uh, to give the, the new governor, Governor Sandoval, uh, perhaps some content for the state of the speech, uh, state of the state speech. But we are, you know, truly at one of those special moments that if we don't seize the opportunities that are before us, shame on us. One of the things that we have done that I'm terribly proud of is 
created something called the New Nevada Task Force. Uh, perhaps not the most exciting name, but it's something in, in a group that is doing incredibly important work. You know, we talk about economic development, we talk about things we want, we dream about an economy that uh, is perhaps uh, less reliant on the traditional gaming and hospitality and mining industries, but uh, what are the things that we can really do? You know, what, what are our assets? What are our strategic advantages? What are the things that truly can be clusters of future economic activity that's away from the traditional job market in Nevada, but things that we can really pursue that's not Pollyannish, but a deliberate strategy that we can pursue that will create jobs for Nevada. You know, the Economic Development Commission has been certainly highly engaged in helping the private sector bring new jobs here or create new ones, uh, expanding operations. In the last two years, probably 25,000 jobs plus have been worked and developed because of some of the efforts of the development authorities here uh, and, and the Commission on Economic Development. But again, what is the future? Where, where can we go? And uh, the folks who've comprised this task force are really a, a who's who. And, and, and folks, uh, there are many others who have that who who status but could not just physically be part of what we're doing. But we brought people from the private sector, from think tanks in state, out of state. Uh, certainly our, our NC partners, you know, Dan Kleitch, thank you so much for making these things happen. And President Neal and Milt Glick, uh, I know are here. But the university system, our entire education system is, is critical in, in all of this because an educated workforce is, is certainly a key to anything that we're gonna be talking about. But uh, we have legislative partners. Marilyn Kirkpatrick has been just a marvelous partner in this process for us. Uh, but I'm you know, truly excited about the group that we've assembled. But there are about nine sectors that I would like to share with you today. Very briefly, it's hard to do uh, hundreds of hours of work in, in, in 10 minutes or less and keep Phil Satry's airline on schedule today. But I'm going to give you a, a 30,000 view if that's appropriate. Technology commercialization. Again, the, the center of that will be our university system, but all the wonderful research and, 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 and intellect that we have at these wonderful campuses, we need to learn how to better make an app, you know, an applied research approach so we can turn this information, this intellectual property, these patented ideas, these innovations into jobs that will employ Nevadans for five, 10, 20 years to come. There's today and there's tomorrow. We can't lose sight on either of them. But a technology commercialization, we're working with our friends at NIREC, uh, but there are things that we can you know, absolutely identify. One of the great parts of today, and I think why so many of the folks in the room are enthused, or we have uh, folks and friends and, and counterparts from other states who've created models that have worked you know, as entities helping be these job generators, kind of being traffic cops for you know intellectual property and, and other places, um, and we've had the pleasure in, 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 in the past year of meeting our friends from USTAR. Certainly, the Georgia Research Alliance folks have been part of our our regular conversations. But uh, I hope, and uh, with cooperation with our friends in the legislature, that we can agree upon a model and and do the things that we need to do in Carson City to essentially create an entity which will be this. This, this generator, this objective group of individuals who will help in our commercial, uh, commercialization of technology. Defense sector expansion. You know, Nevada has unique facilities, whether it's Nellis Air Force Base, whether it's uh, uh, things like uh, Hawthorne, whether it's Fallon Naval Air Station, uh, things like the test site, we have some strategic assets and that, that truly can be clusters for new economic development opportunities and we are absolutely pursuing those. Film, television, digital media production. Where else, except perhaps Hollywood, do we have such a trained workforce in the entertainment industry? This is an entertainment capital of the world. The people and their skills here truly can be the catalyst to bring in production kind of facilities and go far beyond where we have been traditionally. Um, BLM land, federal land. Uh, we all know that this state is controlled by the federal government to the tune of about 87 percent, give or take. 
Uh, but these lands are critical. Perhaps lands around some of these federal facilities that I just suggested, certainly for renewable energy, which I'll touch in a second, but we need to partner like we've never partnered before with our federal delegation and make sure that the land use that we need in certain proximities are available for strategic economic development. Business to business marketing. You know, our best salespeople are the folks who are doing business here. They have customers, they have clients, they have providers, they have buyers. Uh, they need to be helping tell our story. You know, companies, uh, you know, we, we spent, many of us spent a day at Switch yesterday. An unbelievable opportunity for, for Nevada. It's a data storage system. Many of you know that. But the opportunities, for example, just from this one company that I hope to uh, hear more about in the coming weeks and, and are, are, are things that will drive economic development here, but business to business. International business development. You know, we have people coming to this city, this state from all over the world every day. You know, CES is a wonderful example. We have almost 150,000 people visiting Nevada today for the CES conference. Uh, the tourism, we have almost 50 million people visit our state every year, but our abilities to reach out, to speak particularly to some of the non-traditional partners of Canada and Mexico, Asia. Nevada can absolutely be the gateway to the western United States for places far away, particularly Asia. The relationship, the flight patterns, these are things that we can do, uh, things we've already started, but we just need to make a concerted effort that uh, our friends in Asia see their toehold for commerce, for opportunities that work for all sides to create jobs for Nevadans are right here in Nevada. And with all due respect to our friends in California and Oregon and Washington, we have a far superior ability to deliver opportunities to them. Bioscience development. And again, what do we have? What are our resources? Besides our, our, our resources at NSHE, we have things like the Nevada Cancer Institute, the Ruvo Cleveland Clinic, uh, the DRI facility, the Peterson Whittemore uh, Institute up north. These are world-class institutions of higher learning and research. The abilities to leverage off of these unique resources to create jobs, to employ Millennium Scholars, to bring in you know, the caliber of people, to drive these schools on these campuses, to deliver engineers and research uh, individuals when they graduate and have an opportunity in state when they graduate. That's what that is all about. Medical tourism can certainly be a part of that. We've all talked about it, we all know about it, and I absolutely believe in it, renewable energy. Uh, Mother Nature has given Nevada a bounty that is, you know, beyond the wealth of the Comstock load that helped create this state. Uh, the things that we can do, particularly in solar in the south and geothermal up north, are profound. Uh, we all want a green environment. We all want to produce electrons in friendly ways. Uh, we have a state that's hungry for energy to the left of us and, and, and multiple avenues. And we must take advantage of the ability to be an energy producer in the Western United States. But more importantly than producing the electricity from renewable sources, we need to be the research hub. We need to be the manufacturing hub of the mirrors, the pumps, the things that create renewable energies, wind turbines. These are the things we can do. And if we can get that cluster, that, that initial critical mass, we can absolutely be the epicenter of all renewable energy efforts from production to construction to the manufacturing and research pieces. Transportation. We have an unbelievable resource in McCarran Airport, Reno Tahoe Airport. These are things that can be economic engines that are economic engines today. But our abilities to use uh, this kind of infrastructure uh, Without taking sides, high-speed trains between Southern California and, and, and Las Vegas, these are the kind of innovations, these are the kind of things that can create thousands, literally, of jobs tomorrow. So these are very roughly from that 30,000-foot level, the, uh, the things that we've identified from this task force. Uh, we will be presenting a final paper. You know, our, our panel needs to agree on, on some of the final details. We hope to put some uh, extra incentives in some of these, some more exciting stories. 
things like uh, trying to secure the Winter Olympic Games in, in northern Nevada, which would be an economic engine for the entire state. But these are exciting things. Uh, some of these are certainly long-term planning things, but some of these opportunities are available today and can create jobs in Nevada tomorrow. So again, I want to thank our friends at, at uh, the NSHE system and, 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 and for putting so much of this together. Neil, thank you. Dan Clates, your partner in this. Uh, many of these individuals, again, have been part of this task force. I thank you for being part of it. But uh, this is our moment. Let's seize it. We've got a marvelous day in front of us. I'm, I'm eager to hear our other speakers. And I promise you from my standpoint, you know, the, the energy, the effort, and the focus that I and I know my legislative colleagues will put into these efforts will be profound, uh, will be serious, will be post-partisan, and it's something that we can be proud of to, to bring back to all of you come uh, June, right? Okay, we'll be done in June. You, you heard it here. Thank you again very much for all being here, and uh, Happy New Year. Good morning. Good morning. I know it's early, but it's time to wake up. Nevada is alive and we're ready. We're open and ready for business. Am I right? Good. Well, if you look around, you'll notice that this room is virtually filled to capacity. That is as it should be. Because nothing is more important than what it is we will be discussing today. Nevada's economic future and how all of us play a part in making it become a reality. This kind of conference has not been common in the state of Nevada. Five or six years ago, it may have not even seemed necessary. We led the nation in job growth and population growth. Residential and commercial construction was booming. We had more jobs than we had job seekers. But now, we are where we are. Nevada is economically distressed like never before. By some measures, we are in worse shape than any other state in the country. But out of this crisis, there are both challenges and opportunities. We have the opportunity to reshape Nevada's economy, but we also must recognize our challenges. We cannot grow our economy without embracing the fundamental necessity of providing an educated workforce and of growing that educated workforce right here in our state. We must match our restricted revenues to those programs that most likely improve our chances for economic success, namely K-12 and higher education. We must reform the way we deliver all state services to maximize efficiency so that the dollars that we do have can be invested where they are needed most. We must reform our economic development outreach to target in laser-like fashion the kinds of companies that best fit our strengths and the future that we all want in our state. Now to do these things, we have to draw upon ourselves. We have talent, we have tenacity, and we have the desire and we have a crisis that will get all of us to the table. And that is exactly where we are today, at the table. And through this conference, I hope that we can begin a vision of where we want to be to outline the resources that we have, as the Lieutenant Governor says, in the right places, and to create a strong mechanism for accountability for how those resources will be spent. As we create and implement this vision, though, we must also focus on the immediate need for us to create jobs. Our responsibility, then, is twofold. One, create jobs now. And two, create a vision for Nevada 2.0. There is a sense of urgency, the urgency that I see every day in the budget projections I receive and the unemployment numbers that we read but most recently in the faces of the unemployed. We've lost over 200,000 jobs in this state. That's 200,000 families that are struggling, that are in need, that, that are losing their homes, that are worried about their children's future. 
They're worried about meeting the basic necessities of food and clothing and shelter and medical care. But what they want most is a job because a job provides a sense of dignity and purpose. So it will take all of us working together to create new opportunities and new jobs for these Nevadans and their children. I, as a state le leader, can do my part with my colleagues providing legislation that fosters economic growth. Business leaders can do their part by lending their time and talent to efforts to diversify and expand our economy. Educators must help us build the bridges we need between our education system and Nevada's new economy. Community organizations can refocus their programs to align with our economic goals and the needs of our citizens in participating in a new economy. Now, one of the things I think we will learn today is that other states which did not roll along as easily as we did, riding the good times, they began planning their economic futures years ago and invest, invested in and implemented measures that built some sustainability into their economies. These states have been better buffered against the national recession and have not experienced what we are now experiencing. Their unemployment rates have not hit 15%. They have industries that have, con that have contracted, but not to the extent of our construction and gaming industries. So we can learn from them. But we have some other guideposts as well. As I conclude, I want to say that the work of the Nevada Vision Stakeholder Group, which was a 20-member group of citizens, business leaders, educators, community organization representatives, and public officials, formed a, a strategic plan for the first time for the state of Nevada on key quality of life areas. And one of the statements out of that report said that the quality of life is a hollow promise without a healthy and supportive economy. That's what we're here today to build, to implement, and to carry forward. And I look forward to joining with you in that effort. At this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, uh, the person that I work with uh, and spend, um, unfortunately, more time with over the next five months uh, than my wife, uh, the next, the new speaker of the Nevada State Assembly, John Asagera. Good morning. I thought Stephen got taught you on that one. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Satry, I'll get you back on time. Mine, mine will be right on time. Um, I, I leaned over to Stephen earlier and I said, uh, man, look at all these people. This is great. You know, I think it says something about our community and our state that this many folks are in this room. It shows a real hunger uh, for what we all want, and, and that's a little bit of change and a little bit of improvement in our economy. I also leaned over to him and I said, uh, I said, Stephen, how do we get this many people to a fundraiser? And, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. But, you know, the funny thing is that I leaned back over to him and I said, you know what, if we fix the economy, we'll get this many people to a fundraiser. So um, I think that's the answer. Um, so good morning. I'd like to echo the, uh, the comments of the Lieutenant Governor uh, and the and Majority Leader Horsford. Um, and thank you for all, for taking the time out of your busy day to come talk to us about Nevada's future. Um, as we prepare for this legislative session, we have some immense challenges. But uh, I'll use a quote here, as the, as the scholar William Ar Arthur Ward said, a pessimist complains about the wind. An optimist hopes it'll change. But a realist adjusts their sail. I'm a realist. And I'm looking to all of you to help guide us in adjusting that sail. We've been on the same course for decades, and it's clear to everyone here that it's time for a change. We certainly have had our share of difficulties in Nevada, but today is all about the opportunities that lay ahead. And I believe if you're here in this room, like me, you're ready for Nevada 2.0. That's not a different Nevada, but the next Nevada, improving what we have 
and using the resources available to all of us to create a new diverse economy. We're very fortunate here to have the best and the brightest from our neighboring states. They're all here to share their secrets and I think we should take those secrets. My hope is uh, we'll take this opportunity to lay a foundation for our future. For so long, we didn't have to focus on this. We were growing and our economy was doing well. We were one of the fastest growing states in the nation. We, hadn't, we didn't have to focus on it in a laser-like fashion. We never developed a comprehensive business plan north and south and all areas in between. Instead, we've had numerous agencies operating in just independent silos and not as a cohesive unit. We must change that. It's time to take stock in the assets that we have in Nevada. Nevada will be the leader in alternative energy. We have land available. In North Las Vegas, where I work, we have a 2,900-acre Cheyenne Technology Corridor, and it's ready for development, for manufacturing, for high-tech, for research. We have the UNLV Research Park ready for development. We have the Desert Research Institute. We have the UNLV Trans Transportation Research Center. And I think what we have most, as you see in this room, is an entrepreneurial spirit in Nevada that's second to none. Again, the best and the brightest in Nevada are gathered here in this room today to lay a foundation for our future. A future that begins with a comprehensive and cohesive structure for economic development. One that takes stock of and utilizes all the assets and resources that will contribute to a new economy for Nevada's future. Today, we begin a journey towards the structure, a structure that will, I have no doubt, lead us to success. So before we begin our program, I just once again want to say thank you for sharing your time and sharing your talent and sharing your experience with us.